Let's talk about the money. <laughs> yeah. So, you probably felt insecure the last time you negotiated your salary, right? And you might recognize that guilty feeling after buying that cute little notebook because you deserved it. Well, you know you have like already five of them at home. And maybe you experienced feeling extremely jealous of this friend who bought a beautiful house you know you could never afford. Money is one of our most important basic needs, but it can also be very confronting to deal with on an emotional level, so we don't talk about it. I want to change that, because if you begin to see that your feelings with regards to money actually aren't, actually aren't about the money, you will experience more joy, fun and ease when dealing with your personal finance. So today I want to show you what role your past plays in your current money behavior and how you can make some new choices for your money future. And to help you think about this, about your attitude towards money and the real meaning of money in your life, I am going to ask you to quickly and silently grab your wallets. I'll give you 10 seconds. One, two, three, four, five, eight, nine, ten. And if you didn't bring your wallet, you can just visualize it. Now, have a close look at it and ask yourself this question. What does my wallet say about my relationship with money? Is it big or small? Is it brand new or old and torn? Do you, do you carry cash or only bank cards and receipts? Is it very messy or really organized? Are you maybe somebody that carries nostalgic items in their wallet, like an old concert ticket or photos of your loved ones or little notes? I saw many wallets and it amazes me every single time what a wallet can say about a person and their relationship with money. Now here's my wallet. It belonged to my grandmother so I really cherish it. And if you ask me what my wallet says about my relationship with money, well, I actually don't use it. <coughs> I am very afraid to spend money. And when I decided to dive into why I am like this, it took me back to my childhood. I grew up in a loving family where money was no big issue. We were able to do the things a Dutch middle-class family does. So we went to France in the summer and I had nice clothes and good food and piano lessons. And I had a monthly allowance. My father taught me how to budget, so he had me write down all my expenses in his little notebook. So I felt very much in control about my money during my youth. What I couldn't control was the fact that my mother left us when I was eight years old. And this led to the belief that you can count on nobody, that you have to take care of yourself because nobody else will. So no wonder it's hard for me to spend my money. It's my escape clause. If anything happens in my career, in my relationship, I know I can go and take care of myself. So that's my money story. And now that I know where my behavior comes from, I can choose what to do with this information. I can now maybe experience with spending it a bit more instead of keeping it all in my bank account only because I'm afraid to be left alone. And you know, you all have a money story. Your money behavior is like a mirror. So please look in that mirror. It, it will set you free. It releases you from money stress in all its forms because if you know where your feelings stem from, you can do something about them. It gives you the chance to look at your money through new glasses. The glasses of the grown-up you. 
the mature you, the one that has influence on his or her life, unlike the child you were. And, and it's not always easy to change your money mindset, but if you really dive into your money story, it will change your relationship with money for the better. Now, after you find out what role your life's experience might play in your current money behavior, the next question is, what choices can you make to put your money to good use from now on? So when I figured out the story that played a big part in my life, my money life and my money behavior, I think, I thought to myself, it's time for some new choices. I asked myself, what is it that I want from life? What do I have my heart set on? And when I tried to answer these questions for the first time, I struggled. I struggled big time. Some of the first thoughts that came to mind were, who am I to want all this? How can I be so selfish while well, other people don't have anything to eat? And the rich get richer and the poor get poorer and we have climate problems. Why should I deserve to have more than some others? So not only was it hard for me to spend the money that I had, apparently I also didn't feel I deserved to receive more of it, to lead a richer life. So I really had to work through some limiting thoughts and beliefs before I was able to give myself permission to visualize what I would add to my life, to make it my ideal life. And, I, and when I did, these are some of the things that I came up with. I want a farm with a vegetable garden, with cherry trees and apple trees and walnut trees and chickens and a donkey. I want to go to the movies every week. I want a business that impacts lives, a beautiful home office, make lots of money and I want a new bed. I want a strong and energetic body, a beautiful singing voice, me time. I want to listen and I want beautiful hair. I want to move and inspire people. I want to be able to invest in cultural projects instead of working in that field. And I want a boat. <laughs> and I also want to go on a city trip to Valencia and I want to eat healthy every day and I want freedom of choice and I want a personal shopper. So, what does all this say? When I went over my wants and the why behind them, I came to one main conclusion. It's not about the boat or the new bed or the wealth. It's not about the money. It's about me getting to know myself and finding out that I need lots of quiet time and being alone to be the best version of myself for me and for the people I live with and work with. So how about you? <laughs> what would you find out if you took the time to get to know your needs? Be curious. Stand still for a while. How would you like to love, live and work? What would your ideal day look like? You do have permission to ask yourself these questions. You doing this hurts nobody, on the contrary, and yes, you could sit back, relax, and let it be. You are free to change nothing and keep living the life you've always lived. But what if? What if you took the time to find out what it is that really matters to you and then act upon it? It takes courage to explore your dreams. And I'm not talking about daydreaming here. I am talking about exploring your dreams in depth with the daring goal of realizing them. And maybe you don't have a big dream. Maybe yours is a secret dream. Or maybe you don't call it a dream, but a vision, a purpose, a drive, a desire, or a wish. Whatever it is, do not let your emotions get in the way and start working on the future you envisioned by planning it. Take small, actionable steps. Write down your wants, or have somebody else do it for you, and paste them on your fridge, or hang them above your bed, and look at them every day, and go for it. I saw magic happen when people did this. Now what does all this have to do with money? 
home. If you know exactly what it is that you want from life, you also know exactly where you want your money to go. And your money likes that. Your money needs a purpose. It needs you to tell it where to go. And most of you probably know what you spend on your rent and on your mortgage. And you might probably know what you earn, but do you know where your money actually goes each month? And if you don't, just take a few hours to gain some insights into your current spending patterns. Just do the work, be practical, it's not that time consuming or complicated and it's really important. And if you keep in mind that it will help you lead the life you really want to lead, it also becomes fun instead of scary or boring. So since I learned how to budget from a young age, and with the money story I shared with you, you might think I would probably have hundreds of thousands in my bank account by now. I don't. But what I do have is the money insights to move the money that I have as practically and as efficiently as possible towards my dream goals. So for instance, I put almost all the money that kept sitting in my bank account into extra payments on our mortgage. So now we live in this beautiful family home with costs that are lower than the cheap rental. And, and it's not a farm yet. But I do have time to choose when I work and how I work. And I have space for quiet time now. So the practicalities of all this are very simple. Discover the real relationship with money by finding your money story. Only invest your money in whatever it is that helps you to lead the life you really want to live and track your money. And to be clear, I am not asking you to become a money nerd like me and read everything there is on money and behavior and emotions or talk about it as much as I do, but I do hope I inspired you today to be honest about your relationship with money because it will really help you lead a richer life. And I know that if I can do it, you can do it too. So take care and take your time. And when you, the next time you get your wallet out, you might think of these insights and you might even want to write them down and put them in your wallet. Thank you very much.